14 of the Cloth Diaper Podcast. The Cloth Diaper Podcast is a weekly show dedicated to everything cloth diaper. We share stories from brands, retailers, and mamas around the world about their cloth diapering experience. Hey guys, my name is Bailey. I am the host of the Cloth Diaper Podcast, and I have recorded this intro for today's episode of you too many times. Anyways, if you don't know who I am, my name is Bailey. I am a mom of two, and... And you can find me online at simplymombailey.com. I have been a passionate advocate for cloth diapering for years now, and I love supporting small businesses, small brands, and getting people the support and recognition they need. The Cloth Diaper Podcast is just that community, and I am so glad that you guys have all stuck around since my last show almost two weeks ago. After my conference, I learned that releasing a podcast on a Friday is a good way to kill a podcast, so we're going to try with a Monday release and see if that's more optimistic for my future. And yeah, so next week is Black Friday. We will have a special episode related to cloth diaper need, which has nothing to do with Black Friday, but you can check out my blog, Cloth Diaper Podcast, and Simply Mom Bailey for Black Friday posts this year. Simply Mom Bailey will have a Canadian cloth diaper list, and then a cloth diaper podcast will be more generalized. Using my lists is awesome if you're doing some shopping, because I use affiliate links with retailers and brands that I'm associated with, and this is a great way for me to earn some money, because the truth of the matter is, is podcasting is not cheap. Well, this is something I love to do, and I love sharing stories, and I love connecting with everybody costs a lot of money to host a podcast. It takes a lot of time. And so that measly 5% that I can earn because you shop through my link is a great way to help feed my family. Just kidding. I bought my kids snow boots (laughs) with some affiliate money this week. I know talking about money really sucks, but the cloth diaper industry, they're not like coming at me, paying me hundreds of dollars. On that topic, I will have some big news to share with you soon because I got a job, which means that Simply Mom Bailey will be coming a more brand exclusive place as I work with my new cloth diaper brand. That's right. I got a job with a cloth diaper company and I am over the moon excited. Seriously. Like this is everything I wanted and more. I get to work my own hours. I get to do what I love talking about cloth diapers and it's a brand that I really like. I'm a little bit heart torn because I'm not ready to commit to a single brand but that's okay. I can still talk with all the brands that I want here at the Cloth Diaper Podcast. Today's episode, I woke up extra early for you. I got up at 5.30 to record this interview with Dawn from Humbird. She is on the other side of the ocean, and I got up at 5.30 and I was still an hour late because of time change. (laughs) That's right, guys. I had googled what time I needed to be awake the week before and then time change happened. So I was actually supposed to meet her at 4.30 in the morning, but I didn't. So Dawn was so gracious and she called in late to work and she stuck around and we chat. And I hope you enjoy today's show. Check out her Facebook group, check out her Facebook page, check out everything you need to know. All those links will be at theclothdiverpodcast.com and be sure to shop her shop for Black Friday. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, my name is Don Yesse, um, and I, I besides doing Humbird, uh, I also have a job as the head of um, the Nachmittagsbetreuung. That's the after-school care for the elementary schools in our town. And there's three schools, so I also do that in the afternoons and for fun. <laughs> I do lots of stuff. I, I, I like to go running and we do lots of hiking and I've been teaching the like, girls to sew lately. I have two girls, uh, six going on seven and eight. And, um, yeah. I guess that's- so you keep yourself busy. Yes. And you guys are located, <laughs> you're located in Germany. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually right. If you've ever seen The Sound of Music, 
Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, sorry. And <laughs> the the mountain that she grew up on is actually um, right next to us. Oh, cool. So I'm actually right across the border from Salzburg. Okay, that's a good visual for everybody. Even myself, I've been to Salzburg and Vienna area, so I kind of have an idea about it. Yeah, so right in the in the Bavarian Alps. Oh, okay, all right. And so you're Humbert Humbert Wool, which is a pretty popular wool company, right? How did you I mean, get into How did you get into making wool and diapers and all of that? If you're yeah. uh, If you're an after school teacher, that's a different change. Yeah, I actually yes sort of start in the beginning because obviously I'm American. Okay. I don't have, a, I don't know. I don't have an accent, a German accent. Well, I might now because I've been here for so long. I was like, I think you do. It's how you sound a little bit German. So then I was really confused because I thought you were originally American. Right. I've, but I've been here now for 11 years. And uh-huh. so I speak German in daily language, which is why my English language is probably subpar. <laughs> And probably why I have a bit of an accent, because all day I speak German. But I actually I was a chemistry teacher. I'm a learned chemistry teacher. And I was a chemistry teacher in the States. And then I went to UC Santa Cruz to get my master's in chemistry. Mm-hmm. And while I was there, I got offered a job in Salzburg to teach chemistry at the international school. Oh, wow. And I thought, oh, I do that for a year of fun. And my I have my third week here... I met my now husband uh, at the at the rock climbing gym in Salzburg. So my one year turned into oh, I'll stay two years and see how this works out. To yet um, eleven years, and that's kind of so. Then um, I was the international school teacher when I be uh, teaching there when I got pregnant with my first, and uh, then. Um, I was on maternity leave, and and uh, then I was pregnant with my second, <laughs> and um, it was a really a huge life change going from a career outside of the house to then really a stay at home mom is a career inside the house. Yeah, and I was the truth. It may sound silly, but after the girls were born, I was really lonely. I mean, I had the girls. And, you know, I have a husband and everything, but it was a really lonely time all of a sudden. Yeah, okay, you have two kids there, but it's still a total um, change of your life. And I thought I wanted to just connect with more people. So I thought, oh, I just, you know, uh, I was already class diapering and I was already into wool. And I thought, well, would it be fun just to open a little shop and, you know, sell a couple things and meet people? So Humbert was born from from being a stay-at-home mom and uh, mm. looking for connections to others. That seems to be the story uh, <laughs> of all these great mama entrepreneurs. <laughs> I have pregnancy. <laughs> pregnancy gives us so many great reasons to uh, change paths and learn new passions. Yeah, yeah. it was I, really, I mean, I feel really lucky. I, I, I started off really slow. I mean, I started off, my website was in German to begin with in the German language mm-hmm. and I sold on, on, on eBay and I, and I so slowly learned, you know, and slowly grew. And, and then now it's, it's, it's surprised even me. <laughs> um, is that your connections to the United States? Is that why you're um, fairly president present and popular in the United States versus being European? Um, I actually, ha- um, my European uh, clients are actually growing quite a bit. I think it's more that first English was um, my first language and, and I was part of the cloth diaper. When I first came here, I didn't speak German. Funny that now my English is so bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, so I, when I had questions, and I was on, on American sites and then just my clientele grew from there and and i i because the population of the united states is so huge mm-hmm. they it's just they're your biggest clientele because of the population the, gotcha. the size of the united states and, and i mean all of europe which has how many different languages 
is not even close to the size of the United States. I didn't so know. English was kind of like a starting point. Okay. And, yeah. And it's grown from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that you're crazy busy on your Facebook page and that you took had to take a week off just to chill, to catch up. I mean, I, I work um, around 24 hours with my other job and plus um, Humbird and the growth it's, Humbird's had this year um, really was, uh, I wasn't necessarily um, expecting it to grow as quickly as it did because I'd been in so business business for so long six years now I've been in business but this last year really took off surprisingly for me how quickly it went and it was hard to figure out a balance but now I'm slowly getting into the groove (laughs) and I think correct me if I'm wrong but I was reading in your group you're getting so many demands that you are so many so many requests that you're having to kind of remodel how you do things so that you're you're not getting too many requests that you can't fill your product quick enough. Is that yeah. what you're that's a pretty and, important thing for um, work at home moms to do yeah. and, and garner your authority, your respect, I guess, in the industry. Right. It was part of. Um, when I, I finally, I, things changed a lot for me at the beginning of this year because I found a, a, a company to make the wool interlock for me here in Europe. Oh, so nice. instead of having to import it from the United States, which was always a shortage of wool, I finally had a surplus basically of wool as much as, as I could now. Uh, sell and and from that came the ability to to have these pre-orders I make pre-orders now every month from the first through the seventh and I leave it open for as uh, for seven days and they can buy as much as they want but part of my goal in that also was that my turnaround time I would ship by the end of the same month it's just me I cannot stand to have a list waiting for me I can't Mm -hmm. handle it I have to have the list, get through it, and close it. And so making the pre-order, I was able to organize everything. I sell in this time. I cut in this time. I sew here. I hem here. I ship here. And it seemed to just work out with me as as how I like to be organized and have a plan and it really worked out that way with the with the pre-orders and all of a sudden having the wool and the growth in it. And so I had to just start recently limiting uh, the options because the pre part of getting a ten percent discount in pre-orders is I'm allowed to, I'm able to streamline the operation. Mm-hmm. I, I this is what I sell. I cut now, but every time a new request comes, this is asking for a change in my flow of operations, something special. I mean, I hand draw all of my patterns, the, the, all of the wool patterns that I have for the fluff line and the no fluff line are hand drawn by me. So when somebody asks for a change in something, that's also me having to hand draw something totally new. Yeah. Which then adds time to, to everything and, and, part of giving a 10% off discount is, is that I can streamline it all. Mm-hmm. I never thought about how a pre-order system like that would benefit a small business. I have always been like pre-orders. That's kind of a weird concept and then moved on, but that's a really a great way for you as a one woman show to manage supply and your sanity probably. Hey, Actually, I'm a two-woman show now. Yeah, I have a local um, mom now. She um, works. She's awesome. She actually went to um, Mode Schule. That's Mode Schule. That would be fashion school, I guess. Okay. And she also has two kids. Uh, they're about the same age as mine, so she needs the same vacations as I do when the school is off and everything. And um, I was able to offer her a part-time full benefits job. Awesome. Hey, that's got to feel really good as a small business owner. Hey, to be able to give work to other people. Like who would have thought? Yeah. I mean, it's benefit for us both. I really like her. 
we get along really well. She has a lot of the same val values and a vision for Humbird as I do. And it, you know, as a as a work, as a mom, it's hard to find a job that can work with your kids' vacations, mm -hmm. and that you get vacation time, paid vacation, and you get benefits. And I'm I feel pretty special that I'm able to offer that. Also, yeah. it's a benefit for us both. That, that's pretty amazing. So, what the biggest question that my listeners always have for brands is, what's your why? Why do you keep doing this? working for him or making for him or diapers and wool and everything. My Facebook group is really, they are such a great group of people and Humbird. I think a part of Humbird wool is the camaraderie on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, they are the most, some of the most respects for the respectful group of of people I've ever had contact with questions that questions are asked there that could go to rocky areas. Don't people yeah. help yeah. other, other women there and it is 95% of the time there is, I don't even need to over, um, overlook what's the English word. Mm -hmm. I don't need to, I um, overlook. I, I'm. I'm too. I have barely woken up. <laughs> overlook seems like a really good word, but I know that I know you're looking for a better one. You know, monitor, monitor. Maybe. Where's my thesaurus? Uh, <laughs> I think monitor doesn't yeah. sound like the right word either because no. we're not a bunch of school kids. Monitor, need, monitor. Yeah. I don't. I don't even need to monitor or check that people are being respect respectful. They just are. They they really amaze me. I've met some of some. I have, I mean, I know it's okay in this day and age, maybe it doesn't sound funny, but some of my closest friends I've met through the BST page on Humbird. Yeah. yeah, yeah and and that comes back to why Humbird started. I mean, Humbird started because I was lonely. Mm -hmm. And so it all goes together. Building community. And that's yeah, what you and, and, really want. Yeah. And I'm really, it's, it's part of Humbird that I make the time to be part of that group mm -hmm. it's not just a group for humbird it's a group for us all and i want to be in that too and if if for some reason i lost that i don't know that i would have that much fun doing humbird if i was just sitting behind the sewing machine and i didn't have that interaction with everybody but the community yeah hum the humbird facebook group for anybody listening guys it is a <laughs> i just lurk i have like a lot of other things to do but yeah you're right your community they're and they're huge cheerleaders for you everywhere like anywhere you go on the internet people only have amazing things to say about dawn and humbird and your diapers and your wool products yeah um, so yeah. you you don't make just, you don't make just wool. You also make diapers and flats and nursing pads and yes. other things. You're pretty known for your fitted diaper, right? It's supposed to be um, the nighttime diaper of choice. If you have a super soaker, yeah, the supernova is the supernova. diaper. Yeah, it's the diaper for it's the diaper when all else fails. I wouldn't uh, recommend it for every kid for overnight because it really is for super soakers Wait, we need that. Yeah, i don't i don't know that anyone has peed through that not saying that's a contest no need to you know. <laughs> max out <Don> <laughs> we don't need to find somebody that can out pee it I'm just <laughs> that child probably should scale back on its nighttime water <laughs> <That's about laughs> but it's, it seems uh, people that have tried everything out there and nothing really nothing works and they're desperate have all i've n never has somebody come to me and said it also failed oh. i'm sure it will happen someday uh, statistically uh, at some point it has to but um i'm happy to say it hasn't yet happened <laughs> is that the only fitted diaper you make is just the supernova no i make a, a uh, I call it a daytime hemp fitted, but okay. lots of kids wear it overnight also for if you're at like my average. children. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that can also be used for a, you know, normal overnight, not a super heavy letter. Um, 
it, it's it's also night worthy of a <laughs> did you make the supernova because you had a super duper heavy wetter is that how that no, came to i be? did not actually yeah my girls were not heavy wetters but funny enough i um a woman this was years ago okay I've only been there six years, but four years ago or five years ago, a woman contacted me because her kid was, was, um, peeing through everything. And I just slowly mailed stuff back and forth to her Mm -hmm. and, and to see what would work because I certainly didn't have heavy wedges to try it on. And, uh, and it slowly evolved from, from somebody asking for help. And I, yeah, I don't have heavy wetters either. So like the idea when people talk to me about it, I'm like, oh, I'm daunted by what to even offer. My daughter could probably go diaperless at night and she would be fine. It's funny when my, when my fur, when I, my oldest daughter potty trained, she, for, from years two through three, if yeah. I had a diaper on her, she never peed at night. And the moment I took the diaper off, she peed the bed. Oh, that's my oldest <laughs> right now. Like he's potty trained. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, why? If you're naked, you don't pee the bed, but if you've got a diaper on, you do. You don't, I don't get it. <sighs> oh, wow. Why should somebody buy Humbird Wool over another product? What makes you special? Or what do you think makes you special? Besides your community, your amazing community. Well, um, I mean, I haven't felt everybody else's wool out there, so I can't give direct comparisons, but why I like humbird wool is one it is really stretchy it doesn't there is no break in period so for little newborns uh it's totally comfortable they can they can bend and roll over and grab their feet and for toddlers they can crawl everywhere and for kids figuring out how to walk there it has no restriction in movement it is produced in europe uh and i think as opposed to far away from me so the i think that also um the the mill i use where am i going with this <laughs> i've heard you just you found a new mill um jeanette was saying like in in switzerland was she, I'm uh, no it's in it's in europe oh in my europe in, yeah my mill's in italy actually oh oh italy Oof, that's mm-hmm. kind of close um yeah no it's, it's <laughs> and that you've italy been really really happy with the the quality of the product that they're coming out compared to what you've been working with in the past? I mean, the quality is, it's, uh, the wool I had in the past was also great. It's not, but this, this wool was, I told, uh, I spoke with them and, and talked about what I was looking for in a wool, uh, flexibility, the, the quantity of, of how much wool as a, is how much spandex or so 95.5 i wanted a wool that the yarn was ecotech certified and that the sheep were muscling free and which is something they do to sheep which is not nice and i did not want that done to the sheep mm-hmm. where my wool came from and um and just the um co- weight and content and and i and they worked with me to to make it they they worked with a yarn maker in the area and the yarn maker and the mill together came up with the wool that they provide oh, beautiful. and your wool uh, if people are, don't know it's a, it's an interlock right you know we're not talking about a knit wool it's, uh, so no it's yeah it's it. an interlock wool 95 percent merino wool and five percent spandex mm-hmm. and um it is um i've been doing um Actually, I've I've started doing a second technique on the wool just as of last month to get it to fluff up a bit more, and the the feedback on it has been amazing. And what do you what mean by fluff too, up? What do you mean? Well, so wool interlock or uh, other wool can be uh, often people use the term felted, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's actually the wrong term. The term for um, wool fabric is fulling. It's a okay. fulling method. When you felt something, you actually felt yarn. But when it's in fabric form, the term is called fulling, at oh. least in Europe. I can't tell you 100% if that's true in the States, but my guess is yes. Well, yeah, because it's so, an experience. Like, I have, I have your wool, and it's, well, I did probably call it felted. It looks and feels very different than what actual felted wool, like slume right. felted wool, looks like. It's a different 
texture. So that makes sense. Yeah, right. fuller. So you're trying to fluff it. Yeah. And so what does that mean? I'm trying to imagine. Well, so, so basically what it means is what after the wool interlock has been completely fulled, you can machine wash it mm -hmm. and it will not shrink on you. So you can actually, as opposed to many other types of wool, if it's in your dirty clothes pile and you know how life gets and you accidentally throw it in the washing machine, you will not end up with a doll-sized piece of wool. <laughs> no. You will still be able to use your wool interlock woolly. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it should be, unless your your washing machine has bleach in it or, some, or your wash routine has a bleach cycle or something like that, it should be no worse the wear for going through your washing machine. I think that's what makes Humber wool better than it. typical wool products on the market, is that you can machine wash your wool, because I am one who's accidentally machine washed wool that shouldn't machine wash before, and it's such a, like a... A relieving mindset that an accident could happen. I think everyone's ended up with doll-sized wool. Yeah. In life. <laughs> just like a little moment of crying because you're crazy you're tired. And like, if your kids are wearing them as regular pants, you're like, oh, of course it goes in the laundry bin. Of course. Yes. But it doesn't. Hey? Yeah, that's hey. another, actually, another good point. Another nice thing about wool interlock using it and the wool used as, as diaper covers is not is not only do you not need a different diaper cover, you just can wear the wool as regular clothes. So you yeah. put on a pair of wool pants, and you can use those wool pants all day with no diaper cover. Yeah, and if you live somewhere cold like I do in northern Canada, you could just, it helps in the winter. Or Germany. <laughs> yeah, or Germany. It's probably <laughs> I've talked to moms from Florida. I'm sure they don't need wool for day-to-day. -day. I mean, you could use wool on a hot day, like, well, that's what's amazing about wool is that it's on it's, all your pant. It's you don't need it. It's not that brings up another good point. I'm glad you said that because yeah. as of next year, I actually have two thicknesses of wool. Oh, yeah. So there, there is there will be the Hum Classic wool, which is the wool I currently use, which will stay. Um, it will only change a little tiny bit. I'm adding about ten gra ten grams per square meter to it or 15, something like that. And, but I'm getting another heavier wool because there's, there's families out there that prefer a heavier, thicker wool, and that wool will be uh, about 80 to 90 grams per square meter heavier than the classic. Oh, so if you, if you, I mean, a heavy wool is great, but it's not always great in Florida. So <laughs> exactly. So the hum classic wool you can really wear in summertime everywhere. Yeah. Well, it's minus you ten are. this morning, so I could see heavier wool being nice. Yes, <laughs> and if and if you live in a place that's colder, then you might sometimes want prefer the heavier wool, or it's perhaps you want a big, heavy, thick. A overnight diaper cover then you could choose the heavier wool or if you want something lighter for daytime mm -hmm. you can choose the lighter wool so this is a great transition um what is your five-year plan so your next year plan is to transition to some more wools where do you want to see humbert in about uh, five years are you I imagine have working been, yeah yes and i've really been thinking about that and it's been a big part of my plan is to try and convert Humber to um, basically all of my fabrics as coming from renewable resources, so as environmentally friendly as possible. What a great goal, dream to have. And I'm really lucky because my mill is completely behind me on this. <laughs> yeah. And is helping me find replacements for my current diaper fabrics uh, that uh, environmentally friendly alternatives. Not that, the, I mean, currently a cloth diaper is more environmentally friendly than a paper, but mm -hmm. of course in fabrics you have more environmentally fr friendly fabrics, more renewable fabrics than others. Sheep mm -hmm. being a, wool being a very highly renewable uh, yeah. fabric. So I'm, I'm looking to really push Humbert into 100% renewable uh, environmentally sustainable fabrics. That is an amazing goal. I love it. It's I'm, a long-term goal. I'm not sure when that will come true. Could take a couple years, but uh, it's there. Yeah. When working on all the pieces, like you guys start somewhere. So 
right? You're working. You're thinking about it. You're working yes. on it. When's your next stocking with Humbird? That's a great thing about Humbird is you don't really have to, you don't have stockings. <laughs> oh, you have a pre-order. Pre-orders from, from the first to the seventh, which is great because you don't have to stress out. It's mm -hmm. Not like you have to sit there and click refresh, refresh, refresh. When is the stocking going to take place? Okay, I have to hurry. And, and if order. somebody misses the pre-order, are they able to buy a Humbird wool? Or and then, we, then there's a there's a pre-order every month. So you just wait till next month. Gotcha. Or a, yeah, the leftover if there's leftover colors because I dye. Sometimes I, if I dye, I always dye a whole piece. So if not a whole piece is um, purchased, then I I usually cut it and stock it as retail. So there's often retail wool on the website from what I've cut and, and stocked from the pre-orders, mm -hmm. or you can always wait till the next pre-order, which is then you can buy it at 10% off. Okay. And so the next pre-order will be December? First week, are you doing, are you typically first week of December? Typically do first weeks, but since this is a Black Friday month, I'm gonna do a Black Friday pre-order this okay. year, and then not do a pre-order in December so that my family can have Christmas free of Humbird. Yes, that you probably very much deserve. Yeah, uh, everything, every sale and during Black Friday will be shipped by December 15th, and then I will be closed till January 1st. Nice. You deserve that. So every, every, every flat and insert that will be up for sale will be in stock and ready to ship. And the pre-order, which is not pre-made, will mm -hmm. all be will all be sewn and shipped by December fifteenth. And I actually will have a surprise Black Friday um, ready to ship stocking of the, of a new couple new colors or at least one Ooh. new color. All right, we'll stay posted. <laughs> that sounds exciting. So you're just at humber.eu, correct? Humber.eu, yes. Yeah, humber.eu, and you're on Facebook and Instagram as well, right? Yes. Humber. Mm -hmm. Um, I always end my show with one question: that is what's your best piece of advice for new moms listening today, or for any mom? What's your one? The, I always think that it, uh, basically it's not even just for moms; it's for all of us that. Is when you do the best you can, then that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great piece of advice. And definitely uh, for everybody, for all the areas in our life. For all the areas in our mm -hmm. life. And I totally believe that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking your time today to join me. I'm so sorry if we do late for work. Did you catch my daughter at the end of that recording? You can hear her currently. She's in my office trying to take pictures. She's saying, cheese, mommy. Anyways, you can find the show notes for today's episode at cloth diaper podcast slash show dash 14. If you go to cloth diaper podcast.com, it should be the first one there. If you're listening to this during the week of November 12th. I thank you so much for joining me. I don't really have any other final thoughts besides I'm super excited for Dawn's Black Friday sale. Maybe I'll get my kids some pants. Yeah, you're going to sit here and chat with us? Yeah. And I don't know why she's not napping, guys. Like, why? This is hashtag mom life, trying to be a podcaster. Don't forget that you can find the Cloth Diaper Podcast online. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. No Twitter, because who tweets anymore? Sorry if you do. If you want to be on the Cloth Diaper Podcast, just send me an email. I'm always looking for guests, and I'm lining up my December and January content. Seriously, anybody can be on the podcast. I know I've told you this a million times. I'm just open to conversations about your cloth diapering experience. I hear that it would be beneficial to me if you left me an iTunes review. So if you're listening to this on iTunes, please pop on over, leave me a review. If it could be a nice review, that would be really helpful to me. Thank you so much for joining. Until next time.